Are you a game streamer that streams at high refresh rates? Do you want to show silky, buttery, smooth instant replays to your viewers in slow-mo? In this episode of Stream Guides, sponsored by Nerd or Die, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. It's a pretty slick workaround and I'm stoked to be able to share it with you today. Let's take a look at an example. Let's see it again. Run it back. Super slow mo, we're going slow and in the punch. Heck yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I'm your stream professor, Eples Fox, and this is an exciting project that I have been putting off for way too long, but I will definitely be using in my streams should I do more PC gaming streams in the future. Now, this kind of effect is best achieved with a dual PC setup. You can do it with a single PC setup, but it's way more convoluted and you're adding that much more processing and scene rendering workload to your system that I'm not sure I'd recommend it anyway because the performance impact on your game could be pretty wild. For this project, we need a few things. First, a high refresh rate monitor. In this video, I'm using this tiny little portable ASUS monitor that I reviewed a little while back that is 240Hz at 1080p. Next, we need a capture card that can capture all 240 frames or 120 frames or what have you. You can use any high refresh rate you want. So 144Hz like my back monitor, 165Hz, whatever your capture card can actually pass through and capture, that's a high refresh rate that you have to use. Go for it. For the capture card, we're using the Avermedia Live Gamer 4K, but this will work with the Live Gamer 4K or Elgato's 4K60 Pro Mark II. And we're utilizing these two specific cards because of two things. One, they actually capture and can, you know, record all individual frames of that high refresh rate signal. So if I'm passing through 240 hertz, I can actually capture 240 frames per second. Both of those capture cards will do it. The older 4K60 Pro Mark I kind of struggles with that, and the Avermedia Live Gamer Duo or the Live Gamer Ultra both can pass through high refresh rate signals but do not capture every single one of those frames. Secondly, we're using these cards because they both support multi-app capability, meaning that you can add them to multiple programs at once. Elgato's 4K60 Pro Mark II supported this out of the box, and then they added multi-app to the HD60S and the HD60 Pro. Well, Avermedia launched their Live Gamer Duo with this capability and have since also also added it to the Live Gamer 4K, which means we can have this running in multiple OBS instances or OBS and Streamlabs OBS if you like, without really any issue, which is exciting. We will also need two instances of OBS running. You can do this with basically the exact same setup in Streamlabs OBS, but I'm going to be focusing on base OBS Studio here, uh, but the first instance that we're using will most likely need to be OBS Studio itself. To set up your hardware, of course, do what you would normally do. Plug in your gaming PC into your HDMI input on your capture card and HDMI output to your high refresh rate monitor, and you're good to go. If you're using a monitor that does not support HDMI 2.0 and thus can't do high refresh rate over HDMI, only DisplayPort, then you will have to likely use display cloning out of Windows in order to get HDMI run to your capture card, or you can use the level 1 text repeater, which will pass through a DisplayPort signal but also output HDMI, which is pretty neat but doesn't support adaptive refresh rates or adaptive sync. Uh, I'll have a full video on that coming soon. Software wise, we need to set up our first OBS instance and this will be the instance that's actually recording our uh, our slow-mo, so to speak. So for this, I highly recommend using a portable instance of OBS instead of a main one because you can launch two instances of OBS by middle clicking on your taskbar entry, uh, approving whatever prompts and then it'll say, are you sure you want to launch OBS again? Hit launch and then you can switch profiles, but this can cause some corruption and all sorts of weirdness. I don't recommend it. I recommend downloading a fresh copy of OBS from their website, choosing the portable zip option, extracting that to some folder. I use C, I use C programs OBS portable and then make a shortcut to the obs64.exe, modify that shortcut by going to properties and under target add dash dash portable to the end of the shortcut target and that will run it as its own version of obs. Something to keep in mind is that plugins and things like that will also be need will also need to be installed to this portable instance as well and you'll need to set up new profiles and scene collections for it. So if you have any plugins then you'll have to copy over the data and obs plugins folders over to this one as well. In this profile go to your settings and your video tab and then change your resolution to your desired, the actual resolution that, and frame rate that you're gaming at. So if it's 1080p 240, you do 1920 by 1080. And then under frame rate, to get 240 FPS, you actually go to fractional FPS values and do 240 over 1. 
if you're doing 144 FPS, 144 over 1, and so on. I guess I'll go on and note here that you can actually do this at 60 FPS to slow-mo down to 30 FPS if you stream in 30 FPS, but most people these days don't for game streams, so whatever. Now under output, go to recording, make sure you're under advanced output, and use ideally InVink, but use your graphics card encoder. Ideally you have InVink or QuickSync or something available that can actually do 240 FPS. Doing this in X264 is going to be a little goofy, and we're just doing a high quality recording, so worrying about doing X264 is a waste of time. Just do InVink. I usually set it to a CQP value of 18, that's a fairly high quality recording. And uncheck all the extra options like psycho visual tuning and look, look ahead because those just add extra load and we're not worried about that right now. You can also set your audio to 320 kilobits per second for the best audio, but that's not necessary. Now set your output to go to a specific replays folder, not a folder that all your other recordings go to. It not, must be its own replays directory and that'll be important in a minute. Now add a source for your capture card. Uh, for both the Live Gamer 4K and the Elgato 4K 60 Pro, in order to get all 240 or 144 frames that you're actually passing through to capture, under your video capture device settings, you go to custom, set your resolution, and then under frame rate, you don't have higher than 60 FPS as a specific option, but just set highest FPS, and then click OK. Now you need to set up the replay buffer. The replay buffer is essentially the instant replay capability or shadow play capability, where it will be constantly recording to your system RAM and then you press a hotkey and it will save that to a video. So for this, go to settings, output, and there's a far tab called instant replay. I usually set this to about five seconds because at a high quality recording, it eats up a lot of RAM. Um, and then I've reserved eight gigabytes of RAM. If if you don't have a whole lot of RAM available on your streaming PC, I actually recommend setting like a CBR recording profile instead of CQP like I just set and set to like say 40 megabits per second and then set like two to four gigs of RAM available as your instant replay buffer. Then go to your hotkey settings and set a hotkey for the instant replay saving. So this is alt equal sign for me but something that isn't assigned to something else that you can use. Now click start replay buffer and that is going. If you wish to actually just have replay buffer launch whenever you open this instance of OBS, you can also add that to your shortcut for OBS as well. So after the dash dash portable, you can also add dash dash start replay buffer to your shortcut as well. And you can even set it to automatically open that same profile and everything else in your shortcut if you like. There's a lot you can do with OBS shortcuts. I would recommend making a custom icon. For example, I have this OBS thinking one I got from the OBS Discord uh, for this shortcut. That way you can pin it to your taskbar next to your normal OBS instance so you have both of them ready to go. All right, now set up your normal stream profile as you usually would. For this, I'm using a nerd or die stream package, Kinetic. You can check out our sponsor, Nerd or Die, at eposvox.gg slash nerd or die. They're currently having a spring cleaning sale. Like, you know, get rid of all the old stuff, clean it out, save some money on some stream overlays, and upgrade your stream today with Nerd or Die. They have wonderful overlay systems that provide you with webcam frames, stream labels for your, you know, your recent tips and follows and subs and all of that. They have stinger transitions and pretty much every project comes with a source file that you can open up in Adobe After Effects to completely customize to your heart's content. And they have one click setup in OBS Studio. So literally setting this up in a profile was I just went to tools scripts, loaded the script and click setup scenes and it's ready to go. Now for this, I did actually use that After Effects source file to modify the stinger transition because I wanted one that was specific to uh, the instant replay and so I added a bit of instant replay text to the stinger transition for this package in After Effects and exported it back out to use as a stinger transition here. So then we need to make a new scene for our instant replay to exist. So for this I clicked add new scene, instant replay, I added some cool text to just indicate that an instant replay is playing and then I in order to use that new stinger transition that we just made specifically only on this scene I right click that scene go to transition override and choose our instant replay stinger this means it'll use whatever transitions are assigned to specific scenes for other scenes or just the default but whenever I click my instant replay scene it will use the new stinger transition that I just made just a helpful way to help it stand out so viewers know what is going on Next, we need to add a media source for your instant replay. So if you haven't already, go ahead and save an instant replay from your first OBS instance, as this will create a video file that we need to reference. And again, this should be set to record to its own folder, separate from your normal stream VODs or whatever. Now, in your instant replay scene, add a new media source, not VLC media source, but media source, and find that recent recording that you just made with the replay buffer and add it and enable hardware acceleration. 
For this, we will need a plugin. It's called Directory Watch Media. This will be very important as I'll explain in a moment, but just go ahead and download that and extract it to your main OBS instance, not the portable one. So now that we have this media source added, of course, if you just leave it like this, then it will just replay that same clip over and over every time you activate this scene. This is where that directory watch media plugin comes in handy. Close the properties for your media source, right click it in the sources list and go to filter. And now you can add a directory watch media filter to that media source and then choose by created newest. And now whenever you activate that scene, it will, instead of pulling up the first file, it will pull up the newest file that you have made in that folder, which is why your your replays need to be set to their own folder, because otherwise it'll be trying to pull up your stream VOD while it's happening, or something like that. So now, what will happen here, if we're on our normal gaming scene, and we transition over to the instant replay scene, it will activate our special instant replay stinger, and then it will play the most recent file saved in our instant replay folder. So whatever instant replay you just saved will be the one that it pulls up. We're not done yet, however. Since we're recording our instant replays at a high frame rate, we want them to play back in slow-mo. That's kind of the gimmick of this video. So go back into the properties of your media source and find the playback rate. Now, the math for this will, of course, depend on what frame rate you are recording at. So, for example, at 120 FPS, that recording will be 200 times slower than 60 FPS, which means you need to set it to 50% speed. For 240 FPS, you need to set it to 25% speed to play back in 60 FPS slow-mo. And again, you can go further from there for 30 FPS and things like that. But we want to play back in 60 FPS because that's what we're streaming at. And then we want it to play back from 240 down to 60, which is 25%. Or one fourth. The last piece of the puzzle here is a multi action that I have set up on my Elgato Stream Deck for the switching the scenes and saving the replay buffer all at the same time. This is also something you can do in Touch Portal as well, but I'm showing you in the Stream Deck software here. So our multi action will consist of four things the hotkey to activate the replay buffer, delays to wait for things to happen, and then scene switching back and forth in OBS Studio. Something to note that I keep running into and is really frustrating, if you have your portable OBS instance set to run as administrator, then the Stream Deck software also needs to be set to run as administrator, or the hotkeys won't be sent to that instance of OBS, or at least unless it's in focus. That seems to be completely inconsistent for me. This is annoying because certain program launchers and things like that don't work when the Stream Deck software is running as administrator. So as long as this is a dedicated streaming PC and a dual PC setup, I would just recommend not running your slow-mo instance as administrator in order for your hotkey to work. So creating multi-action, which involves finding a blink key in the Stream Deck software and right click and create multi-action and then click into it. Here we're going to drag our options from the right hand sidebar into the scene. So first I go to system and drag in hotkey and then enter that hotkey, the same hotkey that I have set to save replay buffer in OBS instance number one. Next, I drag in from the Stream Deck category a delay. I have this set to two, mil two seconds or 2,000 milliseconds as that gives it enough time for the instant replay buffer to write to a local disk. I'm using a SSD uh, since we're writing 240 frames per second. Uh, two seconds is probably a little too much. You could probably get away with one. I wouldn't go too far less than one just to be safe because it might be annoying if you go to do your instant replay and it's still pulling up the previous file because it's still writing the first one. After the delay, then we activate our scene switch, which is to our make sure it's selecting the collection from your actual stream OBS instance, and I have it set to switch to my slow-mo replay scene. From there, I have a delay again of however long your clip playback is going to be. So for example, if I have my replay buffer set to 5 seconds, and then I play it back at 25% speed, that is 20 seconds. Now, I, I, since the clip starts playing during your transition technically, uh, so like for example my transition point is one second into my two second tutorial, or stinger transition, then technically that second cuts off so you need a thousand milliseconds less, less. But for 20 seconds of playback that's 20,000 milliseconds. I have mine set to be a little bit shorter because it cuts off a little bit of that extra uh, stuff at the end where I was reaching over to hit the hotkey anyway. Um, so I have mine set to 16.5 seconds but you can set it however you like. Lastly, after that delay is done, that means your replay has finished playing out, then I have it set back to switch back to my normal in-game OBS scene. And then with all of those elements together, that multi-action is now on my stream deck, I'm playing and streaming my game, whenever I want to show an instant replay of a crazy moment to my viewers, I hit that instant replay button, and this happens. Oh my god, they just got murdered! That's one! Two! 
I got two of them. Let's run it back, I guess. That was annoying. Uh, replay. Going in for the slow. And the punch to the face while I get punched by somebody else. Alright, we're getting chased pretty hard already. And another trade. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Slow-mo instant replays at a fluid 60 FPS available to your viewers with the press of a single button if you have Touch Portal or a Stream Deck or some sort of macro solution available. Pretty freaking awesome. I do hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you want to see more streaming experiments and cool projects like this for streaming, let me know in the comment section down below. Go check out our sponsor, Nerd or Die, who provided the overlays for this video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm your stream professor, Vox. I'll see you next time.